Hi everyone, meteorologist Brian Bennett here for a late Friday evening update and I have the latest information from the National Hurricane Center and the latest models as well. So I'm going to try to break down exactly when you can expect the worst conditions in your neighborhood and what type of weather you can expect as well. The latest update from the Hurricane Center, not something we'd like to see. It's done two things. One, the storm has actually strengthened Winds 160 miles per hour, making it a Cat 5 hurricane. Second thing is, it is moving due west. It has not begun that northerly turn, which means the longer it goes west, the more likely that it's going to be that it's going to scrape the very west coast of Florida. So it's going to be a rough day on Sunday for Fort Myers, Cape Coral, Naples, Tampa Bay area. But that does mean a little bit better weather for the east coast of Florida. But do keep in mind, this storm has a very large wind field. So we're looking at strong winds for the entire state of Florida. And we're also looking at a onshore fetch for a long time in southeast Florida. So still a very large storm surge threat in southeast Florida. All right, here's a latest look at the track for the National Hurricane Center. As you see, it has shifted westward just a little bit. So we're looking at the storm making landfall right around perhaps uh, Punta Gorda or maybe uh, the Cape Coral area, perhaps even as far north as Venice, Florida, scraping the west coast of Florida, perhaps going right over Tampa. Can't completely rule that possibility out. And then the storm goes off to the northwest and slowly weakens in Georgia and Alabama. You might be wondering why we're continuing to see this shift in the path and why it's not turning to the north like we want it to do. Well, two things. And both of these are determined by weather systems that are thousands of miles wide and a thousand miles away. One is a Bermuda high pressure, which is centered around Bermuda. Well, that high pressure is a little stronger than the models had predicted, so it's pushing the storm farther west. The second thing being that blocking high that I've been referring to that was initially supposed to push the storm into the Carolinas, well, that is stronger as well. So that's resulting in some assistance and pushing the storm to the west as it continues to get to a higher latitude. So we're looking at weather systems, again, that are thousands of miles wide, and that will determine all the way down to a micro scale whether the storm makes landfall in Everglades City, versus Venice, Florida. So it's pretty difficult to determine when you're dealing with systems that big down to a very small scale where the center of circulation will go. But where the center of circulation does go is oh so important and the type of weather that we're going to experience. Here's a look at the satellite imagery. I'm not happy at this either. As you can see over the last hour or so, Check out the center of circulation. It actually appears that it even made a bit of a wobble to the southwest. We want this storm to turn to the north, and it's not doing so. But what we want to do is watch for a crucial time period. That crucial time period is going to be between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Saturday. So Saturday evening... What we want to see is this storm detaching from Cuba and heading to the north. If it doesn't detach from Cuba during that time period, that means it's going to head into the Gulf of Mexico a bit more. And that might seem like a good thing to have the storm move into the Gulf, but that would be actually a worst case scenario for the Tampa Bay area and Fort Myers. It means one, with the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, that the storm would continue to be very strong, stronger than it would be if it were to ride up and, and be influenced by all the friction of the land. So we would have a stronger storm if it's offshore, and we would have more of a storm surge for the Tampa Bay and Fort Myers area as well. So we do want this storm to actually turn north, even though that would mean that it rides right over the west coast of Florida. That is actually a better scenario than the storm being just off the west coast of Florida. Here's a look at the latest hurricane models. And as you can see, pretty good agreement that the storm goes to the north right over the west coast of Florida. And the National Hurricane Center is calling for that. The uh, the UK Met, the H-Wharf, the Canadian, pretty much every model has a storm making landfall. Again, anywhere from about Venice, Florida down to about Naples, Florida, 
Again, this will occur on early, early Sunday morning, and then I make a curve off to the northwest. Here's a look at the most recent GFS model run, and let me slide this over a little bit. Again, here's the latest GFS model run, and let me show you the different models real quick to kind of give you an idea of the different tracks they're calling for. You saw the spaghetti model plots? Well, here's the GFS. The hurricane makes landfall right around Naples, Florida, rides right up the border of Polk County and Hillsborough County, Hillsborough County being the county that Tampa, Florida is in. The storm then curves to the northwest because of that blocking high to the northwest. So it actually scrapes eastern Citrus County and then continues to go to the north into Georgia. All right, so that is the GFS model. Here's a look at the European model, which has been pretty consistent over the last uh, about 24 to 36 hours. The storm makes landfall right around the Naples area. It rides to the north right over the Hillsborough and Polk County border, just east of Tampa, and then curves to the northwest a little bit once it gets into the higher latitudes and near the Georgia-Florida border. The H-Wharf model has a solution that I don't care for very much. It's one that's a little bit farther west. The storm makes landfall, perhaps, in Sarasota County on the west coast of Florida by about later Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening, and then it rides north right over the actual bay itself, right over Tampa Bay, and then makes that turn off to the northwest. So the H Wharf is picking up on a farther west solution, one that is completely feasible at this time, but not one that I'm overly excited about. Obviously, we want this storm to go farther east and not go over the Gulf of Mexico. All right, this is a brand new model. This is the IBM Deep Thunder model. IBM's put a lot of money into their supercomputers to be able to run this computer model here. It's a proprietary model, not available for free on the internet, but I do have access to it here. And it's calling for a very similar forecast. We're looking at the storm moving north, moving in right around the Naples, Cape Coral, Fort Myers area, and then moving right along the Polk County, Hillsborough County line just east of Tampa, and then it makes that curve to the northwest, not quite as dramatically as the other models have, but nonetheless, it does start to move northwest over Georgia, bringing heavy rain all the way up through Atlanta and Alabama. How much rain are we talking about from this storm? Well, we're looking at the possibility, on average, of about a foot of rain for the entire peninsula of Florida, that's on average. Some isolated locations are going to see 15 to 20 inches of rain over a relatively short period of time. So we're not looking at a Hurricane Harvey type situation with 52 inches of rain, but we are looking at very heavy rain. And again, some flooding, freshwater flooding will occur with this storm with, again, on average, a foot of rain falling in one afternoon with some isolated location seeing 15 to maybe 20 inches of rain. So freshwater flooding is going to be a concern with this storm as well. All right, so let me give you a quick idea about the timeline of the storm so you can prepare uh, to know exactly when the storm is going to move into your area. And since we're shifting the path westward a little bit, that's going to slow down when the impacts take, take place because instead of curving and kind of cutting the corner here by Cuba, instead we're looking at the storm moving more, more far to the west and then making a northerly turn. So that's going to delay the effects just a little bit. So here we are Sunday afternoon and the storm is making landfall. So instead of an eye moving on shore, Sunday morning, we're looking at the eye moving on shore. Sunday afternoon, again, right around the, the Naples to Cape Coral area, possibly as far north as the Venice area. And when it does move to shore, it's going to have very strong winds with it. And then the storm starts to ride north. It's going to be at the latitude of Sarasota, St. Petersburg, and Tampa, and Lakeland area. And also over on the east coast, it'll be... Uh, at the latitude of Vero Beach and Jupiter and areas north at right around, I'd say about 10 p.m. So we're looking at the worst effects in Tampa happening right around 10 p.m. in the evening. And then it moves up into North Florida late Sunday night and early Monday morning. So we're going to be contending with this storm 
for a good 24 hour period in the Tampa Bay area we're going to be dealing with this storm from basically mon or excuse me Sunday afternoon to all the way to Monday morning and then by Monday afternoon the conditions will rapidly improve as the storm goes off to the north all right so that's a basic timeline of what you can expect what about the winds associated with this the so winds are going to be a huge factor with this storm all right so here's the storm moving on shore on sunday and what you can do is look at your legend here if you can see it on your on your screen if not i'm going to try to kind of decipher it for you but as the storm moves on shore the kind of blackish color to white that represents a sustained wind speed of about 80 miles per 80 knots excuse me a sustained wind speed of 80 knots that's about 90 miles per hour you can add about 20 maybe 30 miles per hour to that for a wind gust potential so when the storm moves on shore we're looking at winds blowing all over south florida from basically homestead over to everglades city over to fort myers blowing sustained about 80 to 90 miles per hour and gusting upwards of about 115 maybe 120 miles per hour so very damaging winds very serious hurricane winds moving in to the south coast of florida as we move into sunday afternoon all right going north a little bit by sunday evening we're looking at the worst conditions in the Fort Myers area, Cape Coral starting to move into southern Sarasota. And you're seeing the color here and kind of the, the blackish to white color. Again, same thing goes. Sustained winds about 75 knots, so about 85 miles per hour. Add on the potential for a wind gust, and we're looking at a wind gust of maybe 105 miles per hour or so for everybody in the Fort Myers naples venice area heading over to miami we're looking at a wind gust possible uh, of about 90 to 100 miles per hour so basically everybody south of tampa is looking at the potential for a wind gust of possibly 100 miles per hour or greater all right as we move the storm to the north and progress in time when it reaches a latitude that'll be the worst case scenario for tampa bay this will be late Sunday evening into the early morning hours of Monday and we're looking at uh, kind of the reddish color here for Pinellas County that includes St. Petersburg and Clearwater and, and Hillsboro over to Tampa and Sarasota down through uh, the coastal areas of Manatee and Sarasota County we're looking at winds between the red and kind of blackish color here so red to black that's about a 65 60 to 65 knot wind that's 75 miles per hour so hurricane force winds add on the possibility of wind gust that means that we'll see sustained winds blowing right around 75 miles per hour gusting upwards of 100 miles per hour possible in the st petersburg clearwater sarasota areas so can't rule out 100 mile per hour wind gust again for st petersburg especially in the coastal regions head inland we're still close to the center of circulation so as it heads up to toward orlando and lakeland and inland locations we could see a wind gust still possibly 90 to 100 miles per hour so we're looking at some severe damage occurring even as we head up into the tampa bay area all right progressing in time let's go forward and here we are by early early monday morning the storm is starting to weaken a little bit but we're still seeing winds gusting in the tampa bay area right around 65 miles per hour by monday morning and jacksonville you're seeing winds right by the shoreline that are gusting perhaps around 80 miles per hour and we're also seeing the change in wind direction the wind direction is crucial here so what i want to show you real quick is the wind direction so when the storm first moves on shore we're looking at winds that are out of the east an easterly wind means that the storm surge will not be that bad for the west coast of florida the storm surge would be bad of course for 
the east coast of Florida and the western part of Lake Okeechobee, which is located in south uh, southeast Florida. All right, so we're looking at a southeast wind as a storm first, excuse me, a northeast wind as a storm first begins. And as the storm progresses to the north, here we are by late Sunday evening, and we're still looking at an east to northeast wind in the Tampa Bay area. So if you're going to be boarding up your windows, you probably, if you have limited supplies, want to board up the windows on the east and northeastern part of your home. And then as we move into late Sunday night, that's when we're going to see the winds shift to the west. And that's when we could see the water level rise a little bit. So if we're going to have a storm surge in the Tampa Bay area, it's most likely going to be Sunday night and into early Monday morning. The only good news here is that the storm is starting to weaken at that point, and we would see less of a fetch onshore. It would be an onshore wind, but it wouldn't be as strong as it would have been in the earlier part of the storm. So perhaps a, a little bit of good news as far as that is concerned. So just to recap here, the time period where we would see the west or the worst storm surge on the west coast of Florida would be when the winds are shifting from the west to the east. So if you live in the Fort Myers area, the worst storm surge would be expected to occur from roughly Sunday afternoon to about, I'd say about 2 a.m., would be the worst storm surge for Fort Myers and Cape Coral area. If you live in the Tampa Bay area, the worst storm surge would be from roughly midnight, Sunday night, early Monday morning, and up to about 10 a.m. on Monday morning. If you live up towards Cedar Key in northwestern Florida, the worst storm surge would be happening early Monday morning and into the early afternoon hours. If you live in Homestead on the east coast of Florida, the worst storm surge for you is going to be early Sunday morning through early Sunday afternoon. If you live farther north towards Jacksonville, the worst storm surge will be, let's see, it'll be right around midnight Sunday night to again early Monday morning hours. So that's the time period of storm surge. How much storm surge are we expecting? Well, here's a product from the National Hurricane Center, and this shows you uh, what type of, of uh, the amounts of storm surge or inundation that we can expect. And I wouldn't be shocked to see this uh, change just a little bit with this farther westerly track. Let me refresh this real quick to make sure that we have the latest information. And again, this interactive map is available online on the National Hurricane Center web page. So the worst storm surge looks like it's going to happen in southwest Florida. Let me go ahead and zoom into that location as again that's where the worst surge is going to happen. So basically uh, the blue color here represents a inundation of one foot. Yellow is three feet. Orange is six feet. Red is nine feet. So in the relatively unpopulated area of the western Everglades we're looking at some major flooding that's going to occur. Here we are in the Naples area and coastal Naples you're looking at a storm inundation anywhere from six to nine feet so the water for Marco Island up to Naples is going to come on shore considerably. We're going to see a lot of homes a lot of businesses flooded in the Naples Florida area. Heading to the north a little bit. Same thing goes for Bonita, Bonita Springs. And here we are in Fort Myers. Fort Myers is going to see really bad storm surge flooding. In fact, I used to live in a little community there in the Iona area. But Fort Myers Beach, you're looking at an inundation of 9 feet. That means 9 feet of water where it normally is not located, which unfortunately is going to be into homes and to businesses and on roadways. We're looking at about six foot inundation on Sanibel Island. Head up to Cape Coral. This is really bad news as well. Cape Coral has a lot, a lot of canals that run through uh, the different communities there. Well, we're looking at about a three foot inundation for all of those homes and in, in the Cape Coral area. So major storm surge flooding 
for the Fort Myers, Naples, Cape Coral vicinity. Please evacuate. Don't tough out the storm. You hide from wind. You run from storm surge. So not something to mess with down in that area. At this moment, the storm surge actually not looking too bad for the Tampa Bay area, but we'll have to watch it and make sure the center of circulation doesn't go offshore. But right now we're just looking at a one, maybe a three foot inundation, especially along the immediate coastal locations of Tampa Bay. A bit worse as you head up towards the wetlands of Homosassa Springs and the Crystal River area. So something to keep in mind in that area. But right now, storm surge not looking too bad for Tampa. It is looking catastrophic for southwest Florida, including the Fort Myers area. Heading down to Homestead, we're looking at major storm surge flooding for Homestead and east. Again, nine feet of water on shore in that region. So a very serious situation in that location. So something we're going to want to watch very Okay, the final thing I wanted to mention here is the likelihood of power outages. On the map here where you see the oranges and reds over the state of Florida, that represents between 40 and 50 percent of people being without power. We're going to see millions of trees come down across the state of Florida. A lot of those are going to be on power lines, so do expect to be without power. You need to have food for three days. You need to look at the possibility that you could be without power for maybe up to a week, maybe two weeks. So a lot of folks are going to lose power in this storm. All right, guys, that's the latest look at what's going on with the latest models. Looking like a pretty dire situation for the west coast of Florida. I'll have another update tomorrow, and I'm going to do Facebook Live again in case you guys have any questions that you would like to ask me. Stay tuned, and have a great and safe night.